Hello, this is Mr. Field, and this is my video on limiting reactant calculations involving masses. Now, I should say at the outset that it's generally a bit unclear on the specification uh, whether these calculations could actually be asked on the combined science course. So, if you're a combined science student, um, unless you're really aiming for one of the top two grades, I would skip this entirely. Um, I, if you're doing the separate sciences, chemistry, I would say this is certainly applicable to that course. Now, before you um, watch this video make sure you're comfortable and confident with the basics of the mole concept um, with both the easier and harder reacting masses questions uh, and the previous video on limiting reactants calculations involving numbers of moles now in this video we're going to quickly recap what we mean by limiting reactants and then we're going to work through three different worked examples of these kind of calculations using the masses of substances so to recap limiting reactants Limiting reactants are the reactants that run out in a chemical reaction, whereas excess reactants are ones that do not run out. Okay? To find the limiting reactants, what we do is we divide the quantities in moles of each reactant by their coefficients in the equation. And when we do this, the smallest answer that we get is the limiting reactant. And what we've done by dividing the quantities in moles by the coefficients, that smallest number is the number of moles of the reaction that can actually take place. So, for example, in this reaction here, where we've got three moles of N2 reacting with six moles of H2, how many moles of NH3 can we make? Well, what we do is we divide each of the numbers of moles by the coefficient. So we do three divided by one to give us three. We're dividing by that one there because there is one N2 in the equation. And for the hydrogen, we do the six moles divided by three, this time because three is the coefficient, and that gives us an answer of two. So the smallest of those two answers is that two, which means that the hydrogen is the limiting reactant, whereas the nitrogen is present in excess. And so there, therefore, to find the quantity of ammonia that we can form, all we do is we take this two and we multiply it by the coefficient of the ammonia, which is two, and then, so we do two times two to give us a total of four moles of ammonia that we can produce. Now, so let's look at some examples in a little bit more detail. Um, example number one is to find the limiting reactant and the maximum mass of water that can be made uh, in the, according to the reaction below, um, which is two H2s reacting with O2 to make two H2O. And we start with 10 grams of H2 and 48 grams of O2. Now, our process we're going to follow is similar to the previous reacting masses calculations, except we don't know the numbers of moles we're starting with. So we're going to have to start by calculating the numbers of moles. Then we divide the number of moles of each thing by its coefficient. Then we find the moles of reaction by identifying the smallest answer. Then we multiply by the uh, coefficient of the product to find the number of moles of the product. And finally, we can find the mass of the product formed um, based on that number of moles. Now, we're going to be using this equation here quite a bit, that number of moles equals mass over MR. So let's start by doing our calculating our numbers of moles of each reactant. So we're going to say the number of moles of H2 equals M over MR, um, which is, in this case, 10. That's our mass of hydrogen divided by the MR of H2, which is 2. And that gives me an answer of five moles of hydrogen. Do the same for oxygen. So the number of moles of O2 equals M over MR, which in this case is our mass of 48 grams divided by our MR of 32. And that gives me an answer of 1.5 moles of oxygen, okay, of O2. Now, that's the first step done. The next thing then, is to divide the number of moles of each reactant by its coefficient. So in the case of hydrogen, we're going to divide this by two because there are two hydrogens in the equation. So we do divide by two, that equals 2.5, okay? And we'll do the same with oxygen. Now the coefficient for oxygen in the equation is, there's no number written there, so it's a one. Uh, so we do that divided by one, 1.5 divided by one, and that gives us 1.5 again. So we can see that of these two numbers, 1.5 is the smallest, and therefore um, oxygen is the limiting reactant because 
there's only enough oxygen to do 1.5 moles of the reaction, whereas we've got enough hydrogen to do 2.5 moles of the reaction. So we've done the divide by moles bit, we've uh, identified our limiting reactant. So now, to find the number of moles of water, we're going to multiply the reaction, uh, the number of moles of the reaction by the product coefficient. So we're going to say the number of moles of H2O equals the number of moles of the reaction, which is that 1.5 that we just found here. Okay, And we're going to multiply that by the coefficient for water in the equation, which is up here in the equation, that is a 2. And that is going to give us an answer of 3 moles of water that we can produce. So the final thing to do then is to find the mass of that water. And we're going to use our rearranged version of our moles and relative formula mass equation. So we're going to say the mass of H2O this time is going to be equal to the number of moles multiplied by the relative formula mass. That's the rearrangement of that equation. Um, so this is going to be the three moles we just found out multiplied by the relative formula mass of 18 given in the question. So we get three multiplied by 18 and that gives us a final answer of um, 54 grams of water. And that's it. That's our final step done. Example number two, find the limiting reactant and the maximum mass of aluminium that can be made um, from this reaction where we have 40.8 grams of Al203 reacting with 21.6 grams of Mg um, to make three MgOs and two uh, Als. So we'll start by finding the number of moles of each reactant. We're going to use this formula here, our moles equals mass over Mr. So we can say the number of moles of Al203 equals m, the mass, which is 40.8, divided by the relative formula mass of aluminium oxide, which is 102. And that's going to give me an answer of 0.4 moles if I put that in the calculator. The magnesium then, we, again, we're going to do the same equation. So we're going to say the number of moles of magnesium equals mass over mr, which in this case is the 21.6 grams of magnesium divided by the relative formula mass of 24 and that gives me an answer of 0.9 moles of magnesium. So that's our first step done. Our second step is to divide the number of moles of each reactant by its coefficient in the equation. So for the aluminium oxide we're just going to be dividing by one because there's only one aluminium oxide in the equation and that's obviously going to leave us with the same 0.4 and for the magnesium we're going to be dividing that one by three because there are three uh, magnesiums in the equation. So 0.9 divided by three will give us 0.3. And so the smallest of these two is clearly this one. So therefore, we can say that uh, magnesium is our limiting reactant. Um, also, therefore, that means the aluminium oxide is present in excess. And so we can use that limiting reactant to find the number of moles of the aluminium that the question is asking about. So we can say the number of moles of aluminium is equal to the number of moles of the reaction, which is the 0.3 we just found, multiplied by the coefficient for aluminium in the equation, which is that 2 uh, in front of the aluminium up there. And that means that we are going to produce 0.6 moles of aluminium. So that is the fourth step done. Our final step now is just to find the mass of 0.6 moles of aluminium. And we're going to use our rearranged version of this equation in the top right there. So we can say the mass of aluminium equals the number of moles multiplied by the relative formula mass. So in this case, that is 0.6, the number of moles we just found out, multiplied by the relative formula mass of aluminium, which is 27, given in the question. And if we do that, 0.6 times 27, we get an answer of 16.2 grams as the final amount of aluminium that we can make in this reaction. Example number three, our final example. Find the limiting reactant and the maximum mass of carbon dioxide that can be made um, according to this reaction. So we've got 23.2 grams of butane, C4H10, reacting with 62.4 grams of oxygen, O2, um, making carbon dioxide and water. So we'll start as always by calculating the number of moles of each reactant and we're going to do that using that equation in the top right there. So we can say the number of moles of C4 
H10 equals mass over relative formula mass. So that's the 23.2 grams from the question divided by the 58 uh, relative formula mass that's given in the question. And that gives an answer of 0.4 moles of C4H10. Let's do the same for the oxygen. So the number of moles of oxygen is mass over relative formula mass. So that is the 62.4 grams from the question divided by the relative formula mass given in the question, which is 32. And if we do that, we get an answer of 1.95 moles. OK, that's our first step done. Our second step is to divide the number of moles of each reactant by their coefficient in the equation. So for the um, for the butane, for the C4H10, our coefficient is 2. So we can divide the 0 0.4 by 2, and that is going to give us 0 0.2. And for the oxygen, our coefficient is quite big this time. It's 13. So we're going to divide our 1.95 by 13, and that will give us an answer of 0.15. So we can see that that is just slightly smaller than the 0 0.2. So therefore, we can say that um, oxygen is limiting. And we can use that to find the um, number of moles of the carbon dioxide that we're going to be making. So we, to do that, uh, we multiply the... Um, number of moles of the reaction, our 0 0.15 by the coefficient for carbon dioxide. So we can say the number of moles of carbon dioxide is the number of moles of the reaction, which was that 0 0.15 we just found, multiplied by the coefficient for carbon dioxide, which is 8. And that gives us an answer of um, 1.2 moles of carbon dioxide that we're going to produce. And so the final thing is to find the mass of that carbon dioxide. So you say the mass of CO2, rearrange this equation up here to say mass equals number of moles multiplied by relative formula mass, which in this case will be the 1.2 moles that we just found out, multiplied by the relative formula mass in the equation, which is 44. So 1.2 multiplied by 44 gives us a final mass of 52.8 grams of carbon dioxide produced. Okay, so that's it, the end. As always, thank you for listening and well done if you got this far.